We're with Matt Braun to break down the Twins offseason. We have blueprints for you with opinions on each blueprint. It's time for agencies underway. It's coming up on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to another edition of Lockdown Twins. It's Thursday, November 10th. I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker, here with Matt Braun. We want to thank you for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Matt, welcome back. Free agency is officially open. As of right now, the Twins can go out, and this is this is usually how they do it. They sign guys immediately. This front office, nope, they don't, sadly. <laughs> but they could if they wanted to, Matt. It's open. How are you, and uh, what are you expecting from this offseason? I, I was going to say, you must have a very different memory than I do, <laughs> my God. Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, we just hit a weird cold spell in Washington, and by a big cold spell for our standards. So it's like it's 36 degrees, and everyone's complaining. I'm like, hey, this is beautiful. This is perfect. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm doing quite fine. I wanted to, you know, this is a different sport entirely, but I wanted to be a Tim Worlds fan. I'm no longer a Tim Worlds fan. That team sucks, man. <laughs> yeah, we were watching last night, and just my dad and I were like, oof, this is gross. <laughs> it's gross, but the Twins offseason hopefully will not be. So what we have today, I'm going to share my screen. We're on Zoom today. We have our own off-season blueprints. Ignore all my tabs. But we're <laughs> going to pull up Matt's. So this is Matt's off-season blueprint for the Twins. These are his, his moves. This is on Matt. Matt is Mr. Derek Falvey right now. <laughs> so if you're watching on YouTube, you can see. If not, he's got a catcher, Ryan Jeffers. First base is Luis Arise. Second base, he's got Eddie Julian at second base out of the gate. I love it. Gio Urshela at third, Carlos Correa at short for $30 million. Alex Kirloff in left, Byron Buxton in center, Trevor Larnick in right, DH is Jose Miranda. On the bench, Gilberto Celestino, Aledmiz Diaz, I like that. Nick Gordon, Omar Narvaez is your backup catcher. He's another addition here. Sonny Gray, Tyler Malley, Taiwan Walker, Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober is the rotation. And then in the bullpen, Yuan Duran, Jorge Lopez, Griffin Jacks, Jorge Alcala, Seth Lugo. Caleb Thielbar, Kenta Maeda, and Cole Sands. That is a total payroll of $139.4 million with the budget at $140. Matt came in right below the self-imposed budget. <laughs> Matt, take me through your uh, your thought process here on this on this blueprint. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, well, I guess we can start with the hitters. Uh, the most glaring thing there at second base, like you point out, that when I sent it to you, your reaction was quite wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Edward Julian, I'm really... Uh, I just don't understand why he wasn't up uh, in September. He's got to be added to the 40 man anyways to be protected from the rule five. So really it just doesn't make sense to me that uh, they didn't give him at least a little bit of major league playing time. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and this isn't a slide on Jorge Polanco. I think Jorge Polanco is a phenomenal hitter. I think he's been a great twin. Uh, now, oddly enough, one of the more longer uh, tenured twins, which is weird to feel like. Uh, but again, you just look at uh, his glove and how it is not really translated at second base like we thought it would be you know he's never been a great defender uh but at least we thought you know you move him to second at least you could hide it no I, every advanced metric still hates him and thinks he yeah. hasn't really gotten better so julian's not gonna be much of a defender i don't care uh you know i think his bat's gonna play and it's really gonna play at seven hundred thousand dollars uh so you're gonna save a little bit of money there uh resign carlos for 30 million yeah okay i don't need to go over that uh i have trevor larnick in right over kepler uh you know, I just think it's time to get Kepler out of there. I think Larnick, uh, when healthy, can be production-wise in the same ballpark. Uh, so, you know, at like one-tenth the price, of course, you're going to do that. Uh, I got Aledmus Diaz. Uh, out of all the utility-style players uh, that I could find that were going to be available, Diaz was the only one who could really play a passable shortstop, uh, which I think is uh, valuable in the utility yep. guy, actually necessary. And the Twins haven't really had that guy since uh, Ari Adrianza. Um, Nick Gordon should not be playing shortstop. That's why. I like him. Not a shortstop. Uh, and then Omar Narvaez. It says backup catcher, but he's going to be split in time with uh, Jeffers. Uh, I think as a left-right platoon, as two guys who can frame uh, well, 
maybe not at the elite level, but definitely at an above average level. I think that's going to be uh, a good enough tandem uh, to go with any other catchers, uh, any of the other playoff uh, tandem catchers that you looked at. Uh, so Matt, the pitching I, before you get to pitching, are we? Oh are yeah, we, I just talked for a while. Please, no, that's please. all right. I, I'm curious. Are you training Polanco and Kepler for prospects? The people are wondering where is Polanco, <laughs> where is Kepler, and who's coming back in return? They can be, or if you can find, you know, major league player for major league player, uh, I'd be down for that also. That would make things obviously a little weirder, and this wouldn't be an accurate. Um, payroll estimator thing here at all uh but i don't mind you could trade him for prospects if the uh player uh in return is a good fit now let, let's be clear i'm not going to fall into this trap of you trade him for pitching okay there's no team out there if you would like to point me to a team that's going to accept any of them and give away like sandy alcantara i'm telling you that team should no longer exist so that's it's not going to be as easy as that but i do think they are still valuable major league players who can potentially contribute uh to a playoff team so there's i know there's going to be teams out there who would accept them Mm -hmm. this is the the lineup part of it to me looks good like i like Mm -hmm. the idea i like edward julian at second base i like the idea of flipping polo for something you know not just anything but like you'd get value for him because of his contract uh, Kepler makes sense to be off this roster clearly this offseason. I like Alemis Diaz. I think he's an underrated uh, get for the Twins potentially or under the radar target for them. Mm-hmm. And then Omar Narvaez, to me, there might not be another free agent who makes more sense for the Twins than Omar Narvaez outside of, of Carlos Correa, who you also oh. have. At short, Absolutely. I'll Absolutely. let you take over the pitchers, Matt. Tell us about this rotation of bullpen. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to, actually. Uh, <laughs> this is where, unfortunately, uh, when you pay Carlos Correa $30 million, you realize you, you're you a bit low on cash when it comes to the pitching side of things. It's just how it works. They don't have unlimited resources. Uh, but what I have is, I think, a decent rotation uh, with uh, enough room to uh, really lean into more of a uh, unconventional uh, pitching staff, one that they could actually, uh, one that they should have been doing last year, really, but uh, one that they now can do. So you have Gray, Molly, and Walker at the top of that rotation. I'll be honest, I don't think that's going to win you uh, too many ALCSs or too many World Series games just by itself. I, I think that is a capable front three uh, on any, you know, if, if they're on their A game. Perfect. You can win that game. Uh, chances are they're not going to be on their A game as much as another, as say, a Carlos Rodon, right? Mm. Uh, but this is a a, a competent top three. Uh, I like Joe Ryan. I think he's uh, at least average, potentially above average. Bailey Ober, uh, same. Uh, where I think this is going to be more fun is, if you notice, I have Kent Tomeyed as a relief pitcher. I think he'll, he should be a relief pitcher in name only. I would really love it if they could lean into this uh, piggybacking style of maybe with Ober, who is going to be coming back after missing a lot of the season. He's going to have to build up some inning again, uh, some, uh, some more innings, excuse me. Uh, so one guy goes five, one guy goes three, something like that. And then you have, you know, Lopez or Duran closing the game. There you go. You got three pitchers. You just got through the game. I'd like to see them do more of that instead of this weird Chris Archer goes four innings. You send out five one inning relief pitchers and oh no, now we're tired the next day. Like, oh, who could have seen that one coming? That's wow, how wild. Uh, and then you, I pay Seth Lugo $5 million just because I had some left over, and I, I like him. I like his metrics, uh, and I wanted the numbers to get up there. So that's that's what I'm doing. I'm not as happy on the pitching side of things, uh, but that's the trade off I chose. Strengths, weaknesses, and then my offseason blueprint coming up after this word from Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security, but you've been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On Twins listeners listening to Matt and I right now can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Simply Safe is outstanding in an emergency 24 7 professional monitoring. Agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance. To save big on the only security system I recommend and Matt recommends, get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. This is their biggest discount of the year. So don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe 
like Simply Say. Thanks again for making Locked On Twins your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts on, the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Strengths and weaknesses for Matt's squadron. This offseason, I would say, okay, I'm going to start if you don't mind. I would say the strength of this team is the offense. And I would say the bullpen adding Lugo. uh, I think the twins are a good addition away from, from the strength being uh, the bullpen being a strength going into the season, a good addition. I like Lugo. I think the lineup looks like it could be potentially very good with Carlos Correa and Buxton, obviously, and Miranda's your DH. And I like the bench. There's more depth on the bench. It feels like I like Narvaez. The rotation, as you said, lacks upside. It lacks like that clear number one. They're still missing a clear number one in that rotation. And I would say overall, it's a solid team. It's a much better team than the one that just finished 2022. I would say the upside of the group feels lower than if you were to take some like some shots, maybe shots in the dark in free agency, if that makes sense. Like Taiwan to me is a safer option. He's probably going to give you 170 innings of quality ball, which is super valuable. I just wonder if they will go after higher upside players. What's your feel on that? I mean, yeah, uh, I think you, uh, I I think you fairly assessed it. Uh, I will say as well, though, that uh, just keep in mind that uh, as a season starts, this is obviously not the team that then you are locked into say going forward in the playoffs. So if you want to play it this way uh, and and this was uh, a little bit of what was guiding me, it was the idea of just get to the trade deadline. I think this team can absolutely get you to the trade deadline with say five, uh, potentially 10 game lead in the division, depending how bad the AL Central is, which is usually pretty bad. Uh, and from there, if you can find the guy and then put you over the top, hey, I think uh, this roster then has the flexibility where you can do that. Um, but yeah, like you said right now, this, uh, the upside just isn't there in the, in the starting rotation, the pitching staff as a whole. Although the, the bullpen is pretty. Honestly, I don't even know if they have to make a single bullpen addition. If Lopez bounces back, Lopez, Duran Jacks, Jorge Alcala is healthy. Caleb Thielbar, who's super underrated. Uh, that's an awesome bullpen right there. Yeah, and Kenta for length. You got Cole Sands back there as well, but I like I like Lugo. He's, I know he's a deep pitch mix because I use him on MLB The Show. So <laughs> All the I'm time, aware baby. Of that. But to me, the biggest difference between yours and mine is uh, it's yours is more realistic, I would say. <laughs> this is like I could see this happening. Correa would be a pleasant surprise, but after Correa, I could easily see – Taiwan Walker. I think he's a clear fit. Obviously, Narvaez to me is is maybe the clearest fit of the offseason. Lugo, I think they can go out and get Alemis Diaz should be attainable. Like everything about this is realistic to me. And that's why I like it. And Correa would be like the key. It would be the key to if you didn't get Correa in this plan, like it shakes up the whole plan, of course. But if you didn't get Correa here, uh, it would feel a lot different. And I would feel more underwhelmed about it but because you got Correa after that like you got better they got Taiwan they got Seth Lugo you know they got Alemis Diaz here they got better uh, and they got Correa back so to me it's a better team I think it's more realistic and I like it man I think you did a nice job and I like the Julian angle uh, I also like the Polanco angle too because I, I do think he's a he's a prime trade candidate yeah have we seen yours yet though I feel like you've been hyping it up yeah so I'm going to preface mine, and if you're watching <laughs> YouTube, you'll be able to see it. But this is something that – this is like a model that I'm really excited about potentially happening this offseason, which is the Twins go out and get some premier talents in free agency and then swing a big trade for a starter. So I have Jeffers catching Jose Abreu at first base for two years and $36 million. I got Jorge Polanco at second. Gio Urshela is gone, traded. Jose Moran is your third baseman for the league minimum. Correa's back at eight years. $32 million a year with an opt-out after year four. So it gives the Twins some leverage there. Opt-out after year four. Kirilov, Buxton, Walner in the outfield. So Kepler's gone. Luis Ariza at DH. Kyle Garlic, Nick Gordon, Hilberto Celestino, and our guy Omar Narvaez is the backup catcher on the bench. I have the Twins trading Brooks Lee and Giovanni Moran for Brandon Woodruff. I want to get your thoughts on that too, Matt. But I have Woodruff, Gray, Malley, Ryan, and Ober in the rotation like Matt. I bumped Kent Maeda to the bullpen, and then my big bullpen addition is Rafael Montero, who's coming over from Houston, and that's for three years and twenty-seven million. A big bullpen addition there, and the total payroll on this team is one hundred and forty-seven million. 
part of that is I I pushed Kenta's salary down to five because I assume that he would be piggybacking and he's not going to reach all those innings limits. But 147 million would be a seven million dollar bump. Not crazy, Matt. What are your initial thoughts? Man, yours is a lot more fun than mine is. Mine's so boring. <laughs> uh, Jose Abreu. Oh my! I th- for how mad White Sox fans alone that would be. That would be something. I love the Woodruff addition though i think he's still super underrated somehow despite being a two-time all-star i think he's really uh a workhorse maybe not better than burns is but i i think he's in that conversation uh what else yeah i i mean um i do wonder a little bit about walner and right field i like his potential but uh oh lord can he not play that position well i'm sorry uh it's gonna be a a big drop off from kepler to him to say the least but other than that i um I really like what you did here. Uh, Monturo for three years sounds a little bit too much like Addison Reed for my liking, but hey, <laughs> that's fine. We get it, got to get it done. We got to get it done, right? Yes. So I, I agree with you. My worries about this team and things that your team has better here is depth. Like the bench, Garlic, Gordon, Celestino, and Arvaez is a really underwhelming bench to me. Like I like the Diaz edition in yours, and I just think the bench is overall better in yours. So I worry about depth here. The health of the team, Abreu's old, you know, Correa, he has health questions before 2021, mostly, obviously, Buxton, Arise. They, there's a lot of health questions on this team, but maybe that's the case just generally with whoever gets added. And then the defense, like Miranda at third, uh, Walner in right field, even Kirloff in left. Abreu didn't have a very strong season at first base. You already mentioned Polanco's defense at second. It's kind of like Carlos Correa and uh, a bunch of and Byron Buxton and a bunch of question marks around the around the field. It, this has a Phillies vibe to me. Maybe I'm swayed by that. But the strengths are you have star power. You got a Brayu Correa and Buxton. Uh, the rotation is so much better with Woodruff. And then I think the bullpen would be a strength too with Montero and and Lopez and Duran and Jackson and, and Theobar. But this is uh, much less realistic than Matt's. Matt, what do you think about the Brooks Lee? Giovanni Moran for Brandon Woodruff. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you think this is a, a serious undershot for what would bring Brandon Woodruff. Two years of team control. Let's project him 11 million this year, maybe 15 next. So two years, 26 million for Lee and Moran. Well, I have a, a, a terrible pulse for how trades like uh, what what teams consider equal value. So I don't know if I'm one to really criticize. Uh, my only question would be where uh, Lee would fit in with. Milwaukee, considering they have Adamus and Urias pretty well locked in on that left side of the infield. Yep. I guess you could push him to second and maybe trade Colton Wong, but I don't I don't know. Maybe that's thinking about it too much. But uh if you want to give up Lee uh as the centerpiece for a trade for Woodruff, I mean I think I would do that. Uh I and that's saying that's as someone who likes Lee. Uh yeah. but you know, Brandon Woodruff is Brandon Woodruff. Sometimes you gotta make that deal. Here's my lineup. Luis Arise is leading off DH, Correa short, Abreu first, Buxton center field. That's your top four. Arise, Correa, Abreu, Buxton, Polanco five, Miranda six, Kirilov seven, Jeffers eight, Walner nine. I think it's a tough lineup, Matt. I think that's a tough lineup. I like the one through four, but again, not as realistic. Let's key in on Abreu here. What do you think the likelihood is that the Twins do move a rise like off first base and he's their primary DH and fills in everywhere around the field. And they actually were to go out and sign in a Brayu, a Rizzo or a Josh Bell. I don't know. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of sense from their roster. And I think uh, even if you look at uh, how other teams around the league treat their first baseman, it's, it's a rotating cast really. Uh, Houston didn't really have uh, a singular first base when they split between Mancini and, and Gurriel. Uh, I guess uh, Philadelphia did because Hoskins is a, a consistently great force. But other than that, um, if you don't have that kind of guy, uh, then usually teams are not going to shell out for him. So I, w- I think he would be good. Uh, I thought he was going to fall off like two years ago. That hasn't happened. I think he's gotten better at least, actually. Uh, don't know how that's happened, but he's done it. Uh, so like, it, if the move were to happen... I wouldn't be opposed. I just don't think it will happen. Yeah, neither do I. But I like the idea of it. Yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah, to add them in there. Uh, You will notice on both of our offseason blueprints, Carlos Correa is a member of the Minnesota Twins. Where are you at right now, Matt, with Correa? I know this is going to change throughout the offseason, like our optimism, our feeling on this whole thing. We'll get more information. The, The market will play itself out. How do you feel right now? Right now, uh 
strangely maybe just a little bit more optimistic than pessimistic like 55 45 it's not much uh but uh it does sound like and maybe this is all um just uh posturizing by Cray and his camp that he really is enamored by not just minnesota uh, but but the franchise as a whole and if you you know read the tea leaves of when uh the team was at the trade deadline and how much influence he had in pushing for guys you know that, that doesn't sound like the kind of guy who's just there for one year and is going to peace out uh but then that puts all the pressure on the front office of course front office ownership whoever's going to write the check and uh, decide how much money they want to give him of course uh but from his perspective from um, um, you know, it it does seem like they they have them in the grasp if they want to actually hand them the money. We'll see whether or not they do. The market is going to dictate so much here. I think if if the Dodgers aren't in, if the Giants sign Aaron Judge, like just how this plays out. If Correa is there late in the off season, the Giants have made their big addition. The Dodgers have made it clear, like we don't want that. We don't want Correa and what he brings, you know, his history and the, our fan base and all that. The history of Correa and the Dodgers is not pretty. If all of those things like fall into place, that's when I would see it happening. But those things have to fall into place. I could, I could easily see the Dodgers putting that aside and going after him hard. In that case, it's over for the Twins. You know, it's over. The Giants, I could easily see losing Judge. And they go after Correa as their like backup plan. Could see that too. I just think there's a lot of routes where the Twins don't get him, but there is one clear route to me, and that's the bigger markets getting their guy or choosing not to pursue Correa in the way that they pursue Judge or Turner or Bogarts. Yeah, I mean, again, this is something we'll we'll all just have to see how this plays out. Uh, I guess the small consolation there is if you do miss out on Correa, you do have Turner, you do have Bogarts and Swanson, who I think is, he's not at that level, but he's probably a level below, but still a phenomenal player. Uh, after that, however, things do get ugly. I would not recommend looking at uh, the next level of players. Uh, I tried doing that once and I'm still recovering. <laughs> His name is Elvis Andrews, folks, and you're going to. Oh, no. <laughs> it's oh. just, I'm, I'm so excited. I, you know what I hope happens? I hope Andrews is signed away like early by not the twins. And he's just like, not an option. And like Jose Iglesias off the board, Andres is off the board and they're sitting there thinking, well, we have to sign Correa or we got Jorge Polanco at short. Maybe that's an outcome. I don't know. I'm hoping for that outcome. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, starting shortstop Elvis Andres, there'd have to be a massive that you'd also have to have opening day starter Carlos Rodon to make yes, up for that. Well, people forget, Matt, the twins were, were about to trade for Elvis Andres before they signed Correa. Like that, that was a legit path. Like Dan Hayes reported they were Elvis Andres was a real possibility. And then it was Correa. Maybe that happens again this offseason. Yeah, I, gee, I, I really know. hope not. Gonna be crazy. I'm super excited for it. I know you are too, Matt. And um, man, what we're gonna we're gonna come back and we'll come back and reassess. You know, whenever you want to come on, You're, well, this is open door policy. But I want to <laughs> assess this market with you too as it starts to play out and see how it changes. Because honestly, and you can weigh in on this too. I don't believe the Twins were targeting Josh Donaldson from the onset that off season. I don't believe. The Twins were targeting Carlos Correa from the onset last year. I think the market played itself out, and they ended up with those guys. And maybe that happens again this year with somebody. No, no, you're right. It seems like they uh, tend to lean towards being opportunistic. Uh, if you want to extend that even, you can talk about how they got Logan Morrison and Lance Lynn at the very end of that offseason. Granted, that didn't play out as well, but it was the strategy that they employed. Uh, whether or not doing that has succeeded i guess is uh yet to be seen uh but yeah it, it does seem more like obviously they're gonna wait and see maybe sign like a, a jonathan scope early like they did uh in 2019 um but it's it's gonna be a while Let, let's hunker down and just hope the vikings continue to play well <laughs> i agree and I, here's what i think one of these guys we have on our blueprints folks so the additions are right off the top of my head we got a lemmy's diaz omar narvaez seth lugo taiwan walker one of those guys on Matt's blueprint, I'm going to predict the Twins do sign. And hopefully one on my blueprint, they sign as well. And oh, Correa's there too, so hopefully he's <laughs> the one. But Correa, Abreu, uh, Montero, Woodruff is an acquisition, and Narvaez as well on mine. But I'm going to make a prediction just because Matt is just a cunning mind. He knows ball. <laughs> he knows ball. And I think it's. I think my, my most likely, uh, I want to hear yours, out of everybody we put on there, is Alemis Diaz or Omar Narvaez. I would put those one, two 
uh, out of most likely. Oh yeah, it's got to be Narva. It's such a good fit, man. It's just it's yeah. just right there. Yeah, makes so much sense. Left-handed bat. I've always liked him. He didn't hit this year, but he's hit in the past. So uh, we'll see what happens. Matt, thank you so much. As always, my friend, thanks everybody for listening. Matt, you know when you come on, it's the most listened episode. Did is it actually? That? It is. I'm going to send you the numbers. It's the most oh, listened. I got to see that. The people love Matt, and he'll be back, I promise. Free agency is open. Maybe when we talk tomorrow, Carlos Correa will somehow be a Minnesota <laughs> twin once again. Matt, thank you so much, brother. We'll talk again soon. Of course. Talk to you soon, my man.